In international macroeconomics, a balance of payments crisis has a very specific meaning. It means that a fixed exchange rate regime collapses. Now, in general, that happens because the domestic economy ran out of international reserves. So the domestic central bank has to hold a lot of foreign currency reserves in order to maintain the fixed exchange rate regime. When it runs out of reserves, it can no longer maintain the regime. The thing blows up and they have to abandon the fix and the currency floats again. When that happens, we say they suffered a balance of payments crisis. Now, when they're forced to do it and run out of reserves, it's a crisis. When they just decide they no longer want to fix the currency, that's a different matter. There are different ways to get into this crisis, hence the word balance of payments crises. One way is for that small economy to suffer a sustained speculative attack. When the regime is credible and nobody is expecting a collapse, then the expectation of a change in the exchange rate is zero. But as you get near the end of the regime, this always starts to go up because people can see the thing is going to collapse. When that starts to go up, we'll find that it shifts the curve in the Forex market, hastening the whole process and causing the collapse. Now, this could happen in and of itself to a small economy and cause a balance of payments crisis. It usually isn't the initiator of the crisis. Usually what's causing it is there's some unsustainable domestic policy, usually a bad government, um, government uh, budget uh, deficit that is being financed. Government budget deficit financed by money. So let's suppose they're running a 10% budget deficit. Now M hat has to be minus 10% because they're paying, they're using that money to buy up the government or finance the government's um, budget deficit. Sorry, uh, they would have, it would have to be plus 10%. So what's going on? The money supply would be increasing everywhere, driving down the interest rate. As that interest rate drops, there would be pressure on the fixed exchange rate to rise. The central bank can't allow that, so they're printing money to pay for the deficit, but that is lowering interest rates, which they then have to undo in the foreign exchange market. So they have to constantly be going out and decreasing the money supply in the Forex. We saw what that means. That means the central bank has to go out to the Forex market and has to sell foreign currency, which decreases their reserves, and decrease the amount of money. That will decrease the money supply. Um, sorry. Decrease the money supply, push back up interest rates, and push them back to maintain the fix until the government needs money again, in which case it forces the central bank to pay for the deficit, which means the central bank uh, increases the money supply, lowers interest rates, has to go into the foreign exchange market through a sterilized purchase, and undo what's happening domestically, and this eats up their reserves. Suppose this is going on at 10% a year, then you'll see the reserves of this country declining at about 10% a year. Pretty much everybody can see that it's going to go like this over time and eventually hit zero. So what happens is somewhere midstream like here, for example, when everybody can see when the end should be, at this point, we get the speculative attack. At that point, this is still going on. They're still losing reserves. But watch what happens. Suddenly, this expectation starts to increase. Why? Because they know when they hit the end, 
the central bank will continue to do this and the exchange rate will rise like it wants to do. So they know the exchange rate will eventually rise. That means the central bank has to increase the interest rate not only to offset the decrease caused by their own government, but now to move it even further to offset this curve that's shifting out that way. You'll see when that happens the first time, reserves may drop like this. Now, the predicted decline is sooner. So, this happens again. And the central bank has to do this again. Which means you get a drop again, and very quickly, you see something that looks like this. It starts to drop probably even more dramatically than that. And instead of ending here, it ends here. And at that point, the exchange rate is no longer defended. This has been jumping out this way, purely due, and the exchange rate goes from its old fixed value way up like that. So if I were to put a time path of the exchange rate just below this, it would look like this. Remember it's fixed. All the way up until this end. And then it'll do something like that. You see a lot of real examples of that in the real world.